Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning. I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Thanks for joining me again this week at our early start time. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, this is the 71st installment of my weekly virtual office hour address. We've now reached 494 days. Uh, we're rapidly approaching that 500 days since the March 16th, 2020 county uh, shelter in place order uh, was put in place to try to slow the spread of COVID-19. And over the last 16 months, we've seen things get worse and better and uh, things are looking, you know, a little shaky again. But, you know, 16 months ago, I converted my coffee shop hours at Bean Scene on Murphy Avenue uh, every Friday to this live stream address. And I haven't miss missed a week since. So people really say they enjoy hearing from the mayor. And these weekly sessions are, are good for me too because they allow me to reflect on the last few weeks. Um, but they also give me a chance to answer some of your questions, provide you some of the updates and news, and just pass on some, some words of encouragement. So I, you know, I also have been uh, busy with, you know, trying to get back in person. So I now follow these televised session with in-person meetings at the coffee shop. So I'll be there uh, later this morning after, after we finish here. But thank you for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale. I hope everyone is doing well and uh, enjoying the summer. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, I'll be changing my background art every week uh, with art provided by Sunnyvale artists. So this week um, is called the Dawn of Cottage. Very interesting blue. Uh, and it's by Rashmi Aurora. So if you are interested in, uh, in purchasing that, you just reach out to me and, and I'll put you in contact with the, the artist. So um, let's go ahead and get started on and talk about what's happened at the federal, state, county, and city level over the last few weeks. Last Monday, um, the Sacramento Superior Court judge denied Governor Newsom's request to be listed as a Democrat on the upcoming recall ballot. Uh, because his lawyer didn't file the paperwork correctly. Uh, so, you know, most people will know him as our Democratic governor. That being said, it won't be listed that way on the ballot. Um, and, you know, it was a good faith mistake, but of course the, the um, Secretary of State basically uh, declined because her, you know, her response um, or her, her uh, duty is to make sure the paperwork is filed, you know, on time in a in a correct fashion, and and it didn't meet that. Um, and then last Tuesday we had a council meeting that went a little past midnight. Uh, our big item was to consider the draft mobile home park memorandum of understanding. So this was um, part of our housing study that went on for several years to look at you know, multiple housing issues um, and what we do to increase the stock of housing, protect housing within our city. Uh, and, you know, council had a lot of questions and residents had a lot, there were a lot of residents who, who wanted to speak on this item. Uh, ultimately, we, we I think, uh, ended up with a good um, decision from an MOU standpoint. You know, we directed staff to go ahead with the MOU that had been negotiated between the the landlord stakeholders and the resident stakeholders and i do think that 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 was you know a good part of this process is getting everyone to sit down and agree on what those terms are um you know the annual rent increase of 75 percent of cpi the consumer price index um and with a three percent floor um was was you know i think a meaningful kind of expectation um and from, from that standpoint, I do think that, you know, going forward, uh, ultimately, um, it'll be, you know, really good that, that we have this more protections. We'll have, you know, the one good thing about as opposed to immediately enacting an ordinance and the other half of what council directed staff to do was to tell staff to go ahead and enact a more restrictive ordinance so that if any of the, you know, any of the landlords that went through for the process and were hesitant about, you know, actually signing the lease, uh, they would ultimately, or the, the MOU, uh, they would ultimately be, 
basically uh, held to more restrictive terms than what's on the what's in the the MOU. So you know the ordinance will be in, put in place. Uh, so staff is off working on that. Uh, the ordinance will be put in place for those landlords that aren't part of the MOU. So trying to make sure that that everyone is actually doing the right thing. <clears throat> and then uh, last Wednesday at a press conference in LA, uh, Governor Newsom basically laid out the, his efforts to speed up the rental assistance um, that, you know, we that was kicked off earlier this year. You know, uh, we put the eviction moratorium or, or the, the state put the eviction moratorium in place um, last year and then they extended it in March to go to September, or actually in June, uh, to go to to September 30th, and you know ultimately, <clears throat> the program that was put in place in March to pay to make sure that 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 uh, landlords and residents would you know basically get money from the state to help pay for their rent um, hasn't rolled out that well, and so you know the governor basically said that that you know to get more participation in the $7.2 billion program. You know, uh, they're, they simplified the application process. They're, they're trying to speed up the processing um, and, you know, simplify the complicated rules and regulations. So, so you know, the, the governor um, and the state legislature basically extended that moratorium until the end of September. Um, hoping to stem kind of this this uh, conceivable eviction tsunami that's there, uh, but a lot of a lot of tenants and landlords who have applied for that program in March still haven't received any payments. So so this was an attempt to kind of say we're trying to make it easier for for everyone to get their money and and you know um, more than a billion dollars of that seven point two. Has been requested uh, from the state from uh, over a hundred thousand tenants and landlords, but only a fraction, about you know, uh, twenty percent, uh, about uh, just uh, close to two hundred million have been paid out. So that leaves many in limbo, and and you know, this is um, <clears throat> hopefully the the new improved website called Housing is Key, um, and. Uh, we'll simplify things and, you know, working with our community partners to reach those that actually need that money. So, so it was, you know, I think it's, it's good that we're trying to simplify that. I just hope that people can get their uh, money, uh, you know, either landlords or, or the tenants can get their money to, to pay back, to do that back rent uh, before that September 30th, whatever, you know, as soon as possible. And then last Friday, um, with the cases of COVID-19 rising locally, uh, Santa Clara County, along with several Bay Area counties, most of them actually, uh, recommended that everyone, regardless of your vaccine status, uh, go ahead and wear your mask indoors. Uh, so, you know, in, and in public spaces um, to ensure that all unvaccinated uh, people are masks in those public space settings. And so it's a precautionary measure, um, you know, and businesses are, uh, uh, you know, urged to adopt, you know, mask requirements for all customers entering indoors uh, for better protection of their employees and for, for the customers. So uh, that was um, in addition to all the Cal OSHA requirements that are already there that, you know, fully vaccinated employees are encouraged to wear masks. Um, if the employer hasn't confirmed vaccination status of all those around them. So, you know, this is an attempt to slow the spread of the virus, especially now that we're seeing more and more, you know, Delta variant positive cases within the county, within the state, within the nation. Um, and then last Friday, uh, there was the grand opening of Alta Beauty. So thanks for those of you that came out for that. Uh, so they, you know, they had their soft opening two weeks ago. And then last Friday was a ribbon cutting. It was good to, to be uh, in person and see people again. 
Uh, so from from that standpoint, hopefully the the people, you know, everyone's had their chance to to make it by uh, to Alta Beauty. Uh, there were you know um, discounts all weekend long, and I think they're continuing some of those discounts uh, at the store. So you know, definitely drop by. It's good to have another place to shop within Sunnyvale. Uh, and then last Friday uh, was the last day for people to jump into that recall race. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the requirements for uh, the recall race for governor, um, beside, you know, basically besides just being a U.S. citizen and registered to vote here in, the, in California, they needed to pay roughly a $4,000 filing fee or get 7,000 signatures from supporters. So there, there weren't um, that, the barrier was pretty low as far as uh, becoming a, um, be getting on that recall uh, ballot. And, you know, as opposed to the 65 people that filed um, that I talked about last week, the final number that were finally, you know, met all the requirements uh, was only 46. So, you know, there were, um, so of that 46 people, you know, 24, 24 Republicans, not 30 that we had that were initially filed, um, nine are Democrats, 15 have no party preference, two are Green Party, one Libertarian, uh, no, sorry, uh, five are no party preference, um, when there were 15 no party preference last year, last week, uh, two are Green Party and one Libertarian. So it'll be an interesting month and a half or so, uh, almost two months uh, from now. Uh, September 14th is when um, we is the, is the final day to vote. Uh, we should be receiving our ballots in just about a month. So for all those that are interested, it'll be, in, you know, it's an interesting time. Um, very difficult for the governor, uh, you know, for, for there's lots of issues, you know, between the Delta variant increasing, fires, um, EDD, uh, drought, water, you know, water issues, I think. It's a, um, the, the governor's walking a tightrope to some degree. I think, you know, there, there was reports this week that, that um, new polls are showing that most likely he will rent, win the recall, but a lot of uh, Californians fewer than uh, just a month ago um, want to vote for, for Governor Newsom in the 2022 election. So, so he's losing his popularity um, in general. So we'll see where that goes. And then on Monday this week, Governor Newsom was in Sonoma and signed a bill for $12 billion in services and housing for Californians um, without homes, or at least at risk at losing their home. And the plan included $5.8 billion uh, to add 42,000 new home, homeless ho housing units through Project Home Key. Um, and that's Project Home Key converts hotels and other buildings into long-term ho homeless housing. And then three billion went towards housing people struggling with mental illness. So I, you know, I think, and then there's smaller programs uh, that, that they're also looking at, but, you know, I think that's, you know, I think that's money well spent, uh, especially with the number of people that are unhoused and that ever increasing within the state. And then on Tuesday, uh, Governor Newsom was at an elementary school in Tulare County um, and signed a $6 billion broadband bill. And so, <clears throat> as we found, you know, with, with uh, remote learning last year uh, and remote, you know, remote work, uh, connecting to the internet um, for, you know, especially for st students with distance learning is critical. And so the broadband package includes you know, 3.2 billion to build, operate, and maintain um, an open access state-owned middle mile network. So, so this will be the interesting thing because this will be, you know, uh, the state basically jumping into that broadband uh, operation. Uh, there will be two billion dollars set aside for that last mile broadband connections for homes and businesses, and 750 million for. For, uh, and as a reserve fund, so local governments and nonprofits can, can secure financing for broadband. So 
I think all those are positive. You know, I've been working with Comcast uh, to get broadband uh, put at Columbia Park at Columbia Neighborhood Center. And I think, you know, so some of the some of the uh, broadband providers have already been making some efforts as far as that digital divide. And hopefully, you know, what the governor is proposing will actually uh, improve that uh, on statewide. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then um, that bill also created, you know, a broadband czar position in the California Department of Technology. So we'll see how quickly, you know, broadband can be rolled out as a state owned and operated operation. Uh, and then yesterday, uh, health officers from Contra Costa, Santa Clara and San Francisco counties announced they, they want all employers to require their employees to be vaccinated against COVID-19 um, with only a few exceptions. And, you know, health officers basically strongly urge all employers. And so this isn't a requirement yet. Uh, this is basically urging employers to, to consider implementing workplace COVID-19 safety protocols that require their workforce to get fully vaccinated as soon as possible. You know, vaccines are, are you know, the best tool to combat COVID-19. Of course, not everyone can get that that um, vaccination, you know, depending upon uh, certain health issues or whatever. So that that is a question from a workforce standpoint, you know. And then uh, Santa Clara County said later in the afternoon that it actually intends to lead by example by requiring all 22,000 of its employees to become vaccinated. So. Uh, you know, San Francisco did that last month, uh, that it would require all 37,000 city employees to be vaccinated, but only when the vaccines um, now under emergency use uh, are fully authorized, you know, our emergency uh, use uh, authorized by the FDA are fully approved. So, so you know, a and, and, you know, reading, you know, CDC requirements and kind of um, operation. We're still m several months away, at least, you know, September, October. You know, that's one of the things that Biden said in a town hall for CNN, I think yesterday, that uh, we're still, you know, September, October, or if not, you know, uh, the end of the year before it's fully approved, uh, as opposed to emergency authorization. Uh, but Santa Clara County officials said they wouldn't wait for full approval before making that requirement. That being said, they still need to negotiate with the employee unions uh, before actually putting that requirement in place. So we'll see how quickly that rolls out from that standpoint. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the uh, weekly COVID numbers. You know, definitely we're looking, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, as you see more and more of the Delta variant, uh, show up around the state, around the nation. Um, from a national standpoint, we've now reached 40, sorry, 3,400, uh, sorry, 34.2 million cases. That's more than 400,000 new cases in the last week. And that's twice as many as we had last week. So, you know, so a week ago it was 200,000 um, and now it's 400,000 new cases. Um, and that's mainly due because of the, uh, primarily due to the Delta variant. You know, nationally we've had, uh, we have 187 million vaccinated <clears throat> with at least one dose. So that's about 69% of adults and almost 60% of adults are fully vaccinated. So, so that's, a, that's positive, but you know, we still keep having, um, deaths re related to COVID-19. Uh, more than a thousand in the last week, so we're now up to 100, 607,000 deaths. And then, from a California standpoint, uh, <clears throat> uh, we're now just over 3.7 million positive cases. Uh, we're up to about 5,500 cases a day now, so that's up to up from 3,500 just last week, and 3,500 cases a day last week. You know, it was 1,500 the week before that. So, so over in the last three weeks, we've probably tripled the number of cases uh, a day that we have. We're still, you know, uh, still 
doing fairly well compared to the rest of the nation, mainly because of the number of vaccinations, so the number of people vaccinated within the state. But that being said, we are seeing breakthroughs uh, of people that have been vaccinated that that are actually becoming po being tested positive uh, with COVID-19. And, and, you know, California has had, you know, over 63,000 fatalities at this point. You know, on a positive note, we've had over um, 43 million vaccines administered, uh, about 500,000 in the last week. And then <clears throat> comparing us to other states, we're still at number 10 with about 76, almost 77% of our residents with at least one dose. And we're number 17 uh, with our residents uh, fully vaccinated with about 63%. You know, and from a county standpoint, you know, our cases have are still um, just over 120,000, uh, sorry, 121,000 cases. Uh, that's up about 1,000 in the last week, which is about double from a, what, a week, what we had a week ago. So, so we about had a week ago, we about 500 new cases. Uh, in the last week, we've had 1,000. So on a week by week basis, the county is going up. We've had four new deaths, so we're at 1,706 new deaths. Uh, but from a vaccination standpoint, you know, 83.3% of the county age 12 and over has had at least one dose, and 77.2% um, of those 12 and over, over are fully vaccinated. So, you know, that's fantastic. You know, I continue to do a lot of advocating on our city's behalf. You know, at the county level, I keep having discussions with county health and our county supervisors. Um, as, far as far as testing, you can always go to sccfreetest.org to find out where around the county you can get tested for free. Um, and as for getting vaccinated, you know, if you're a senior or know of a senior that hasn't been able to get vaccinated, you know, the city has care managers at our senior center. Uh, helping to make those vaccine appointments, you know, especially for those that are homebound and, you know, they can get assisted by the county's in-home vaccination service. Uh, but if you need help getting, uh, setting up that appointment, you can always call the Senior Center at 408-730-7360. Uh, and then, of course, the county has lots of drop-in uh, vaccination clinics uh, for walk-up appointments that you can go to. Uh, or set up an actual, you know, um, uh, appointment if you want at sccfreevax.org. You know, I've talked to the county and they'll be doing pop-up in the old Macy's parking lot uh, right at Washington and Murphy Avenue uh, at the, in, the com in the coming month of August. And that'll be tied to our Wednesday night music series. So it'll happen on the first uh, night, which is um, August 4th, and then it'll happen again on August 25th. Uh, so that'll be from 5 to 10 p.m. So <clears throat> if you want to enjoy some music, uh, enjoy some good food downtown, uh, and then of course get your vaccine, you'll be able to do that the first and last Wednesdays uh, in August. And then El Camino Health is also providing no cost COVID 19 vaccinations on site. Um, but they also are doing it on Saturday, August 7th um, at the Columbia Neighborhood Center. Or, so Columbia Middle School, the Neighborhood Center there, uh, 739 Morse Avenue. Uh, they, you know, basically it's a walk-in appointment for anyone 12 and older. So, so you can go there and get your vaccine if you want. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, I wanted to announce uh, next up some upcoming events. And so later today at 10 a.m., uh, there will be a beam signing at City Hall. And so this is, you know, City Hall has been rapidly uh, being constructed. They finished the basement and the underground parking. Uh, and now they're, you know, uh, framing uh, the four-story building with the steel. Uh, that should be done by the end of the month. So we're actually doing a beam signing ceremony to, to top off uh, that, that structure. Uh, they've already started laying the metal flooring and uh, they'll be pouring 
uh, some of that flooring uh, from a, a level by level basis. Uh, our next council meeting is Tuesday night, uh, on July 27th, and it has two big items. Uh, so one uh, is we're basically recommending, uh, so staff is recommending council to declare a stage two shortage level um, and 50% water use reduction goal uh, for the, <clears throat> for because of the drought. And, you know, and as far as uh, stage two restrictions, you know, they're, they're uh, man basically recommending mandatory water irrigation schedule, kind of like what we had during the last drought. So limiting irrigation during, you know, in through 2014 through 2016, uh, we limited irrigation um, and it actually proved very effective. So staff is recommending a schedule that will limit irrigation to three days per week. Uh, so depending upon what your address is. So for odd number addresses, so addresses ending in 13579, uh, landscape and turf irrigation uh, would only happen on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And then for even addresses, 02468, uh, landscape and turf irrigation would only happen um, on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. So, so odd is Monday, Thursday, Saturday, <clears throat> and even is Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, meaning Wednesday, no one would be watering. So it'll be easy to tell if people are breaking the law, uh, if, if uh, there's any watering, there should never be any watering on Wednesdays. Um, but, you know, customers are still prohibited, you know, and this was part of the existing ordinance uh, to from irrigating between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then, you know, there will also be enforcement of this water conservation program, you know, and it's mainly to solicit cooperation for water users. They're either unaware of the water use restrictions or just fail to comply with the provisions or the ordinance. And so, you know, the first and second um, would be uh, zero dollar fine with a written warning but the third violation would be $250. The fourth violation would be $500. So, you know, all this is, you know, education to make sure that people are doing what they can to uh, basically prevent uh, or save water where, wherever they can. So, so that's actually pretty critical. Uh, the other thing for that evening is we'll be adopting a resolution um, to uh, temporarily uh, allow outdoor dining on in private parking lots, as well as the 100th block of South Murphy Avenue until December 31st, 2021. And so, you know, um, the, and, and the council understands the needs of both residents and, and businesses and the impacts that those closures may have. Um, but of course, to address these issues, you know, staff it's just not closing down the street. There's other investigations that need to be happen. Uh, and, <clears throat> you know, uh, staff will ultimately prepare, uh, staff is proposing to prepare a study issue for council's consideration and action at the 2022 council study issue workshop. So, you know, definitely uh, staff, city staff has heard, you know, the positive comments from residents that they really enjoy uh, the keeping Murphy Avenue closed. I do think that uh, that's been a positive effect on our community, especially as in, in response to COVID and people wanting to eat outdoors as, a poor, as opposed to indoors. And so, you know, continuing that I think has positive effects, especially until the end of the year. And then studying what the effects of, of keeping that closed, you know, what the issues are. You know, we've had heard from a few businesses that, that complain that um, you know, if residents aren't able to be dropped off in front of their restaurant or their store, uh, they most likely won't be able to go there. Uh, but in general, I've heard very positive things. So, so it's, if you know, if you want to give feedback to council on what you think should happen, you can always send a message to council at sunnyvale.ca.gov or, and, or the city manager at C-I-T-Y-M-G-R at sunnyvale.ca.gov. And then as far as upcoming events, um, on Monday, August 2nd, um, 
City Hall will reopen its doors from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You know, the planning office has mainly been by appointment only to this point. Uh, the library will be back to its old pan pre-pandemic hours. Um, and the Washington Park Pool, their new swim center, should be open for business that day. Um, the, there's actually a grand opening event for that Friday, August 6th, but operation should be beginning on that Monday. So for those of you that want to reserve lap swim or something of that nature, uh, definitely uh, you can start using the pool on that Monday. And then Tuesday, August 3rd is National Night Out. So, you know, there's, there's, uh, and uh, if you, if your neighborhood hasn't uh, contacted the city yet, I know that there are at least tw 12 different groups around the city that are planning um, block parties for that, for that evening. So National Night Out is normally a national event for people, you know, midsummer uh, or close to the end of the summer, the first, the first Tuesday in August for people to gather outdoors, uh, get to know their neighbors or get to re, re meet their neighbors after COVID. And so I hope that, that those, um, residents that'll be out there, um, will be safe of course, but, but I think, you know, getting, being back in person and, you know, the city, <clears throat> our, our motorcycle police, our fire, you know, trucks, um, our canine officers uh, will be kind of going from event to event, uh, trying to, you know, build that community environment and, and getting to know everyone again. So, so that's Tuesday, August 3rd. And then Mo Monday, August 9th is the deadline uh, for our next board and commission applications. So we currently have uh, three, uh, three different positions open. BPAC, our bicycle Advocacy uh, Pedest and Pedestrian Advocacy Commission, the Heritage Preservation Commission, and our Personnel Board. So those applications are due by 4 p.m. on Monday, August 9th. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our weekly questions. Uh, Jennifer asks, um, how are businesses doing in Sunnyvale regarding the issues with the pandemic and COVID-19? So, you know, I'll be honest, it's been a very difficult 16 months you know, especially with the ever-changing response to COVID between the lockdowns and the opening and then another lockdown. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we, from a city standpoint, we, we created the Sunnyvale CARES program to give grants, you know, not loans. Some cities gave loans to businesses. So we ended up giving 15 or 5,000 to $15,000 grants to our, to our businesses. Um, and it was partially funded by the city, $600,000. Uh, our high tech companies actually uh, put in some additional funds, so over $700,000. So that that helped, you know, some some of our businesses weather that storm. Um, and you know, and I've highlighted, um, you know, I have my mayor's restaurant project. So if you go to eatsunnyvale.com, you can go see, you know, the what uh, the different over 200 restaurants that I've highlighted and, you know, I've met the business owners. I've, you know, uh, done what I could as far as promoting what, what they're doing within our city. And definitely, you know, some, some businesses have closed, you know, and talking to our, uh, director of economic development over 200 small businesses have closed, but over 500 have actually applied for businesses license a business license and opened up. So, so, you know, we have that and, and there's always kind of, kind of, you know, restaurants closing and new restaurants taking their place. Um, I, uh, I don't think I mentioned it here, but, you know, Rock Bistro, uh, closed after many years of serving our, uh, serving our city. Um, and a new Burmese restaurant is, is currently, um, setting up shop there. So, you know, there, I think we see, that kind of a continual sort of operation within a city. Um, but in, in net, we've actually had more businesses start to open up in our city than, than actually close. So, so, you know, it's, it's, that's a positive thing, but definitely please support your local businesses wherever you can. You know, Ulta Beauty uh, had their grow, grand opening last week. Um, and there's lots of, you know, lots of new businesses that are in the works whether or not that's restaurants or stores, you know, there's, 
several restaurants that you know that you know a new pizza place um the the japanese pancake place you know rei there's lots of restaurants that are either under construction or uh work finishing their interior you know city line is has you know several restaurants that are planning to open up in the fall or beginning of, the, of next year and and they're starting to do the build out of all the other stores there will be some announcements over the next month or so so you know look forward to to seeing all that um David asked, what can residents do to be prepared for the next earthquake? So, of course, you know, the city provides uh, multiple classes, and, and that's in conjunction with our, our CERT volunteers who mainly run those classes, uh, and they do a fantastic job. But there's our personal emergency preparedness, our PEP course. Uh, it's a two-hour class, um, and our next one of those is just in about a week, at, um, July 29th. If you go online, you can search for CERT or emergency preparedness um, on sunnyvale.ca.gov, and you can find out more information and how to sign up. And then our CERT, our Community Emergency Response Team, is a seven-week class, and I went through that uh, many years ago, uh, but it's one night a week and then a final exercise on a Saturday. That starts at the end of August, so, so definitely consider doing that. Uh, Evelyn asked, when is the Washington Park Swim Center opening? Uh, so that was delayed because of some equipment issues. You know, this is one of the big issues under COVID of, of uh, distribution and delivery of, of equipment has, sometimes has, let's say, some issues. Uh, we've gotten the majority of those issues and now uh, the fences are up, the water's in the pool. Uh, they still have some equipment with the splash pad, but uh, and they're doing some landscaping, but uh, the date is now set for August 12th to open, as I said earlier. Uh, and the uh, grand opening will be that Friday, Friday afternoon, uh, August 6th. So hopefully you'll be able to attend that uh, and enjoy the new pool. I de definitely think that, you know, August is usually our hottest month. So hopefully uh, people will actually be out there uh, enjoying enjoying the new swim center. Uh, Francis asked, uh, I miss the activity on Murphy Avenue. Is live music coming back? Uh, we're only uh, about two weeks away, less than two weeks away from uh, Wednesday night music. Uh, so Wednesday night rock and Saturday night jazz. So that'll be starting uh, every Wednesday and Saturday in August. So uh, hopefully People will be out enjoying themselves. Uh, and finally, um, <clears throat> Chuck asked, will there be an art and wine festival this year? So yes, the chamber is putting on uh, an art and wine festival that's scheduled for October 2nd and 3rd. So that weekend, that first weekend in August. And then the chamber will also be holding uh, Murphy Awards. So they're kind of coming back to, to some sort of normal uh, after last year uh, put uh, basically a hold to a majority of their events. So they'll actually be announcing uh, the Murphy Awards later this week. Uh, so uh, ultimately, or the, actually next week. So you know, we're starting to get back to some sort of normal as far as that's concerned. So uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, Uh, when is the irrigation program going into effect? Uh, so uh, there will be uh, education, you know, so that'll be part of the, one of the things that we'll, we'll be deciding at our next council meeting. Uh, most likely, we'll see <coughs> if it's an emergency ordinance um, within probably beginning of August. If not, it's 30 days. So, so somewhere between that time frame, you know, I'll announce, you know, during this. And, and there will be a, a, a big public education campaign from a city standpoint to announce when those new rules, when the fines will go in place. It won't be just put in place and nobody nobody knowing about it. So, so um, and it looks like that is 
all of our questions. So, you know, thank you for uh, joining me again this week. You know, I, I'm, I'm really proud of Sunnyvale and you know, our response to the pandemic. It hasn't been easy over the last year. It's, you know, it's been, we've had, everyone's had their up and ups and downs and, you know, and it's not been easy, especially because we've been separated. You know, it's not easy to, to tell people everything that you're going through and s sheltering in place is, uh, been very difficult for so many of us. Um, health issues, uh, dealing with that depression of being by yourself or, or not see, being able to see your friends or communicate to your friends as easily um, has, has made it, you know, has, for a lot of people, we value that social interaction that much more. I think that will be one of the positive things that will be coming from, from those that have, you know, gone through this last year and a half. You know, the future is still uncertain. Yeah, you know, we, new issues come up. You know, we don't know how the Delta variant or, you know, I've already heard of a Lambda variant uh, that's coming. Uh, how, you know, these new variants will affect us, what, what additional measures might have to be taken. Uh, but your actions uh, do make a difference. You know, they have made a difference. So, you know, get your vaccination if you haven't already, but try to also continue to build and rebuild our community uh, wherever you can. Uh, people missed that social interaction over the last year, but you know, ultimately Sunnyvale will emerge from this as a stronger community. We're in this together, we'll get through this together. So thanks for listening. Uh, until next week, have a good weekend and take care. Goodbye.